Yeah. All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you. And uh, if I could have the managers come up to the front, and uh, we'll get rolling. So uh, first, thank you, Gary, uh, and uh, the Western Business Association for inviting me here today. And um, thank you to everyone who's here so we can uh, get rolling. Good morning. Uh, for those of you who might not know our uh, panelists this morning, on the left is Kurt Bellavance. He's the town administrator in Tingsboro. I'm sure everyone in the room knows Jody Ross, town manager in Westford. And on the end, Paul Cohen, town manager in Chelmsford. So thank you for being here this morning. Um, Kurt, you're on the left. You can go first and maybe just tell everybody what's going on in Tingsboro because you and I were talking about a lot of the exciting business news <laughs> that's been going on lately. Thank you. Stand, or you want me to um, however you want to do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you again uh, for having me here this evening or the, this morning. Uh, I'm Kurt Bellavance. I'm the town administrator in uh, Tingsboro. Um, I'm glad uh, I had this opportunity to come here and talk a little bit about Tingsboro. Um, we've had um, a little bit going on in Tingsboro. Um, we've probably been in the news a little bit too much lately with a, a fire and uh, an imposter and things like that. Uh, it's fun to uh, get calls, uh, you know, on Saturday uh, evening, Sunday morning, you know, about the news, but um, it's all part of the job. Um, I have a few notes here I'd like to talk to, uh, kind of let everybody know what's been going on in uh, Tingsboro. I think last year when I was here, I talked about uh, uh, getting some special acts, so we had uh, additional liquor licenses uh, come to Tingsboro, which has uh, panned out very well. We, we got an additional 14 uh, liquor licenses for uh, restaurants all along uh, Middlesex Road. Uh, and we've already got rid of, I would say got rid of, uh, issued uh, five of those already. So within probably about an eight-month period, we had uh, five new uh, restaurants uh, come in looking for uh, liquor licenses, which is great to see. Um, we tend to uh, compete a little bit with Nashua. If you're driving up Middlesex Road, uh, you'll be in Tingsboro, and then you, all of a sudden you get to the uh, sort of the Taj Mahal of retail, and, and you'll hit uh, Nashua. So it's nice to have them there, but we like to try to absorb some of that, and, and restaurants seems to be the uh, best alternative for us. Um, we did open up some, um, some businesses uh, within Tingsboro, uh, Tingsboro Sports Center, uh, which is a regional draw uh, for people. The owner of the original sports center uh, constructed a new facility. Uh, they were talking about doing an expansion in a couple of years, but they're already coming back in to talk about an expansion because it's been uh, very successful for them. The, some of the business you've probably seen, uh, Top Line Granite is soon to open up on Middlesex Road. Uh, they've done, um, they moved from a smaller area. Uh, they've been expanding as well, and they've done a lot of construction on their site. Uh, they're growing, which is uh, great to see uh, in Tingsboro. Then also we've had some smaller businesses that we've gone, uh, that have uh, grown in the last uh, year or so that I've been here. And mostly it's been along uh, Middlesex Road. We have uh, basically, you're familiar with Tingsboro, we have uh, two uh, off ramps, uh, exit 34 and exit 35, Westford Road and Middlesex, that's sort of our commercial area. Uh, what we've done uh, last year, we had uh, approved a sewer expansion project uh, they're under construction now, and that will be uh, up and running probably uh, in the fall uh, if everything goes as well uh, planned. And then what we're doing right now is we're planning for phase two, which will go all the way up to uh, Nashville, we'll go along Middlesex Road. Uh, we had our first uh, uh, meeting and invited the uh, residents and business owners along Middlesex Road to come in. Here are our plans for really the first time. We've been talking about it, but this is really something we could show them on a plan and a map. Uh, it, was, it was received uh, overwhelmingly positive. The, uh, the business is there. It's 100% betterment, so the businesses are all going to be paying for this. They were 100% they were behind it. They wanted to know if they could come and, and vote on it. We said, no, if you, you can be a property owner, uh, a live in town, you can, you can vote on that, but not as a business. But we're going to work with them to try to get uh, their voice out because they're 100% behind it, and we had all positive reviews for that sewer expansion project. So we're, we're pretty excited about that because we've met with, um, you may be familiar with the TJ Maxx Plaza, uh, that reason, recently sold. Uh, so we met with a new owner for there. He's 100% behind the sewer project. He's looking forward to uh, the sewer going in. He's going to work that into his uh, construction timetable uh, so that his expansion and, and the improvements at the TJ Maxx Plaza will go along with the, uh, with the sewer project that's going in. Other than just that, part of the uh, us 
in the town, trying to, to put ourselves in a good position. Um, not only is it trying to get businesses to come into town and expand our commercial base, but it's really uh, financial responsibilities as a town uh, because we need to put ourselves in a good position where we can assist uh, new businesses coming in. We want to have a product where they want to come to Tingsboro. So over the last uh, year or so that we've been um, um, looking at, we've really been trying to tighten down on the budget. Uh, we were fortunate enough last year, we didn't have a lot of snow. <laughs> so that turns into what's called free cash uh, for the town. So at the end of the year, when we, we basically reconcile our budget, what's left um, it was basically goes called free cash, and that's money that basically goes into our rainy day account. Uh, typically, we'd have to put money back in for snow and ice, uh, depending on how much that costs each year. This year is a little bit higher, but since last year was really a a great year for uh, not snowing and not, not having ice. We were able to take that money and save that and put that in um, what we have as stabilization funds. So we were able to um, probably in the last uh, two years double that, uh, what we have put away. Uh, so that we can use for uh, new projects. Um, if we're gonna expand uh, any of our uh, facilities, uh, then that, that's money that we typically use for that. Uh, we're looking at um, putting a public safety building in, which would be fire and police coming up uh, probably another few years. So now we're taking a look at that, and this is certainly a fund that's gonna help us manage that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The, uh, one of the other uh, projects as I talk about Westford Road and Middlesex is, uh, everybody's familiar with the Tingsboro Bridge. We have uh, several older buildings uh, in town right basically where the bridge is, and that's what we call our town center. Um, it's not as much as a center as it used to be, um, but what we're trying to do is, um, rehab some of the buildings there in that area and what we're trying to do is plan a uh, town center. So some of the money that we're saving and we're putting away, we do have goals in mind. Um, we've just recently completed the exterior renovation of the first parish meeting house. Uh, we've replaced the roof and the siding on that building and now we're, we have a group looking at the interior to see what we can do with that building. Um, we have a barn uh, that uh, people may see as well. The two, uh, two sort of different buildings. We have a building that we're rehabbing and it, it looks beautiful now that they've uh, removed the scaffolding. Uh, and we have a barn that's uh, pretty rough shape. So we're gonna be coming before town meeting uh, in May to see if people wanna rehab that barn or do they wanna take the barn down. Um, I don't know if there's anybody here in Tingsboro, but I support taking the barn down. <laughs> um, the uh, part of the whole master plan of that area would, uh, we could include part of that. We could use that for parking. We could use that for additional uh, grass and park area and sort of make the whole center work. Um, there are some folks that want to save the barn um, you know, because of its, uh, some of its historic value. That's what we're trying to figure out, how valuable it is regarding it historically. Um, so right now we're in the process of doing that as well. We have also two buildings across the street, um, what's called Winslow School and Littlefield Library, which we want to incorporate in that as well. Um, we've also had two uh, businesses in that area that have come in and asked for liquor licenses. So we're looking to expand possibly restaurants in that area as well. So that's something that we're looking at probably uh, within three to five years and then hopefully that would continue to go and you're looking at something probably up to seven to ten years. But this, the business we're in, it's, it's, it's a long-term planning. It's not as not typically as fast as the private sector where you, th you need to turn things around quickly. Um, you, yeah, I'm sure you've all heard the phrase of uh, you know, government and how fast we move. So, uh, but it's a, it's a long planning uh, effort and it takes a while to put these things into place. Um, some other things that we've done um, financially, we've uh, taken some property that the town has owned. Uh, it's in a, a commercial or industrial zone. We've owned it for several years. We've taken it for tax title, and it's just been sitting on our books, not, not bringing in any revenue. Um, so what we've doing, we've uh, identified a couple of the properties, and now we're in the process of selling those properties. One of them, uh, we're, we're in the process of selling. We should be closing uh, within a month. Uh, they're looking to put a 15,000 square foot commercial building on that site. Um, so we're really turning this uh, negative into a positive um, just by sort of identifying you know, what's out there and what people are looking uh, to do. Um, We've also uh, opened or started operating our own ambulance service. Uh, previously to that, we were working with uh, Trinity and they handled our uh, ambulance service. So what we've uh, done for research uh, through the fire department is to see what other communities are doing. Um, they've seen that uh, ambulance services have worked. Uh, so we're trying that, we're on a, a three-year program 
to see the how the ambulance service works for us. Uh, we're in the process of taking in revenue as well, and uh, we're so that's something new that we uh, added to uh, in Tingsboro. Um, some of you may have seen if you're driving north on Route 3, uh, the former uh, Charles George landfill. Uh, we turned that into a 2.4 megawatt uh, solar facility. Uh, basically, it's private property. Uh, we have uh, Citizens Energy uh, is leasing the property and, and, and constructed the solar field. But part of that um, project is that we got back taxes that were owed on the property. It was a super fun site. The owners uh, basically said, we're not allowed on the property since 1985. We have no authority over it. We're not going to pay taxes. So since 1985, no one's been paying taxes on this property. But we still calculate it, because that's our responsibility. Uh, so it was about um, almost $700,000 that they had owed, uh, owed the town since 1985. And we were able to work a, an arrangement out with them where we actually got that funding uh, before they started the facility. So that was a nice. Um, project to wrap up and have that funding come back to the town. Now we signed what's called a pilot payment in lieu of taxes. So now they, they're paying us yearly uh, to use that site in instead of real estate taxes. Uh, so that's a win-win uh, for the town uh, as well. Some of the uh, uh, commercial projects that we're looking at, um, Flint's Corner, uh, we were in the news uh, the other day because there was a fire uh, in that area. But what we did uh, last year was we rezoned the property in that area to make it mixed use. Uh, we've, had, um, we've seen an uptick in uh, the request for developing residential property uh, in Tingsboro. Uh, and what I found in really 20 years, it's, it's cyclical. So you'll see uh, residential development really pushing and that's sort of leading the charge. As you start to get a lot of residential, then you'll tend to see the commercial follow that. So I think right now we're in that cycle of having a residential property being sort of the target uh, for the property in Tingsboro. And one of the things that we've talked about at the TJ Maxx Plaza with the new owner is how could they mix some residential property into that and create sort of a retail center with some of the residential behind there. Um, so we've seen some growth in that and part of that uh, mixed use at Flint's Corner. Uh, we've been uh, working on the uh, part of the sewer extension with them and how having that project uh, tie into sewer and expand that. Uh, that was important to them as well. So we're working on that and that project will probably be breaking ground in uh, probably this spring or early summer. Um, some of the other things that I, uh, that I didn't mention, but uh, we try to uh, take what we have as a community and leverage that to see where we can get uh, additional funding from. So last year we were just completing uh, what was called the EDSAT, which is Economic Development Self-Assessment Tool. So basically we had uh, the Dukakis Center at Northeastern come in, they do a study of the, of the town, they go through every possibility that you can think of, transportation, land planning, uh, cost of energy, cost of w who's working in Tingsboro, uh, buildings that we have available, transportation. And basically they came back to us and said um, that Tingsboro is in pretty good shape. Uh, they said the only problem was that no one knows about Tingsboro. <laughs> so uh, they said, you have, you have two off-ramps, you have plenty of land that's available. Uh, we're expanding the sewer, which is key. Um, so they basically said, you need to let people know they can come shopping in Tingsboro and put their businesses in Tingsboro. So sort of the, uh, the selectmen had said, this is what we need to do and that'll be our target. It, it, they were happy with those results, but now they feel like, all right, now we've got to kind of market Tingsboro, get Tingsboro out there and let people know um, what's going on in Tingsboro. And we've seen, I think the economy has been pretty steady. It's been slowly increasing uh, for Tingsboro. So the, we feel that anything in this general area that's good for the region is good for Tingsboro. So if we hear uh, expansion or projects going on in Lowell, that's good for Tingsboro. If we see stuff in Chelmsford or Westford, that's good for Tingsboro as well. Uh, we're not competing against Westford or Chelmsford. You know, we're, we're competing nationally and internationally. So we have uh, businesses that are looking to expand outside of the state, outside of the country. Uh, they may come, if they're coming from uh, Europe, they may want to look at uh, Westford or Chelmsford first. Uh, maybe there isn't some property available, but then they may look at Tingsboro. So we try to share in that because anything good for the region is good for us as well. Um, I think I've uh, 
touched on about uh, most of the projects that we've been uh, working on. Um, we did uh, recently close out a green community grant. Uh, we got $250,000 from the state to retrofit uh, light fixtures, uh, replace um, some school lighting and things like that. That'll hopefully save on energy costs as well. So uh, we're mm -hmm. continuing to do things like that. Uh, again, we always try to tie it in with the budget. We want to make sure that we're not overextending ourselves. We try to be conservative with our estimates and then hopefully we'll continue to grow that way. So I think that's about it. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Kurt. It seems that uh, I'm very busy in Tingsboro these days. Was it the, was it the liquor licenses? Because we kidded about that last year. Not so so uh, anyway, our next uh, presenter this morning is Time Manager Westford, Jody Ross, Adam Manager. Hi, I'm Jody Ross. I'm the town manager in Westford. I'm in my ninth year, if you can believe that. I'm going for the record. Uh, Bob Halpin was, I think, 11, so I'm going to hang in there to beat Bob. But um, before I start, I, I just want to thank Juniper Networks for hosting this, and uh, Steve, and it's great to be here again, and a uh, wonderful room. I don't know if there's a way to just uh, turn this row out. Is that possible, just to see the slides? I brought it brief slideshow. But before I start, um, I also want to thank the Westford Business Association for inviting us today. This is always a, a fun event. And also recognize Tom and the Lowell Sun. They just had a, a s enormous awards you've won, a, a long list I didn't memorize. And m my staff, I have Eric Heideman, our assistant town manager, and Greg Johnson, our project procurement specialist. Uh, Greg was a great aide in me to um, put the slideshow together, so thank you for that. We have members of our Economic Development Committee here and other staff, so thank you everyone. So it's a great year. I heard, I haven't read it yet, but that Massachusetts was ranked number one by US News. I haven't read it, I'm gonna put it in my state of the town, but I think that's fantastic and I couldn't agree more. And in my heart, Westford is number one. I do think regionally, but I'm not gonna tell you that I send anybody to Tingsboro or Chelmsford, but I always celebrate your wins. So anyway, so let's, um, let's go and we'll just, oh, am I supposed to click this? I guess I am. Oh, oh, look at that. I just snapped my fingers. So these are some of the things we're going to talk about today just briefly. Uh, there's a lot of development going on I want to share with you. Uh, lots of transportation, infrastructure repairs, um, economic development initiatives and so on, some public-private partnerships. I'm not a morning person, so bear with me. And I had my floors sanded and stained yesterday, so I'm a little loopy. But let's go to the next slide, please. So I like to show a little bit of statistics here. Our population is growing, and our housing has grown quite a bit since 2010. We, our median price home is 479 now, and our median income, this data is a couple years old. I don't have anything more recent. We have about a little over 12,000 people. That means those are people that work in Westford every day. Seems like it should be more than that, but that stays pretty steady, 10 to 12,000. Really good news, look at the unemployment rate. I was shocked at that. So in town, 2.3, and in our state, 2.6. So that's something we can all be proud of. Oh, okay, here's our tax rates. Sorry, Chumsford. Uh, but I, I like to show that Littleton, I mean Littleton, what am I talking about? Westford actually has the lowest tax rate around, and we do give small businesses a little exemption, but you can see we're very competitive with our tax rates in town. So residential development, we've got a lot going on. There's some single family subdivisions that are out there now, Juniper Hill, 18 lots approved, that we have Spalding Estates, 31 lots. And those of you who know about the Abbott Mill, it was renovated a couple years ago, it brought in 129 units. There's now Abbott Mill Phase Two. The town received a $200,000 MassWorks grant to put in a new water main, and though there's 102 new luxury mill rental units being constructed as we speak. Uh, there's also, since 2010, over 850 units have been built. We are near our safe harbor. 
8.3%. Uh, we need to get to 10%, and we're going to be there shortly. So we have Alder Point is eight townhouses on Route 40, Groton Road, and we also have permits for 450 new apartments. And Bill Olson, our school superintendent sitting here, is, is gasping at this. He was, he was looking at whether we could close a school, but no. Now all of a sudden, we got kids coming to town. So um, anyway, there's, we gave you a map here to show. Everybody knows Red Hat, and I see John here. Uh, that's where the locations are of the two, two of them. And then we have another one at Old Boston Square. So lots, lots to be built over the next 18 months. Commercial, um, those of you who are familiar with Akamai, they did expand about 43,000 square feet in Tech Park East. And Sinusure, that we uh, were successful in granting them a tip a couple years ago. They actually are just in the process of selling to Hologic. Uh, Orchard Square is a new development out on uh, Littleton Road. And there is a restaurant site available. I've been hearing lots of different names, but so far no one has signed up. So maybe Nick, maybe Nick from Aviva Kachina might uh, might want to take a look at that. But so that's that's getting close to completion. New village businesses. As those of you who know Westford, we have five villages, and so we have muffins on Main now, right near the town hall. That's Ellen Hardy, our moderator's uh, new little uh, bakery. Wonderful. You cannot bring your cell phone in, okay, or your computer. You have to talk to each other. But it's a wonderful little place. They got great scones, great coffee, great muffins, and then the Forge Village Restaurant, which seems to have a few different names, but it's great food. It's only open, I think, 6 to 11 a.m. every day. Uh, one of our school employees, Richie Crocker, opened this with Chris Yule, who developed the Abbott Mill, and it's doing a great business. So please go visit two of these local businesses. The neighborhoods love them. So transportation and infrastructure, we have a lot going on. Uh, this year we did the Kai's Culvert out on Groton Road. I don't know who drives down there, but we did that job in like two weeks. It was fantastic, under budget. Uh, we also bought a pavement management system. It's a technology you know, system that looked at all our roads throughout town and, and basically tells us what state of repair they're in, what we need to do each day or each year, and that sort of thing. It's a fantastic program that's really helping us. In 2017, we're going to reconstruct Main Street. We debated whether to put a sidewalk on there. It was the hottest topic last year. The sidewalk did come in within the appropriation, so that will be constructed. Tad Road, very near here, there's going to be a light there, uh, and that's been in the works for a while. We did receive a $400,000 complete streets grant this year from the state, and we are doing some sidewalk projects in, t in our center of town to, to improve pedestrian safety. We're also, those of you who live in Nabnasset, we're extending the Plain Road sidewalk down from where it ends to Nutting Road. There's a very densely populated area there and a school, and we want to get people uh, safely to and from. In design, we're going to put a light at Oak Hill and Groton Road and a new intersection there and also Dunstable Road and those projects I believe are on the schedule to be done uh, in fiscal year 19 construction. Beaverbrook Bridge is going to be repaired and Boston Road is on the um, docket now to be redone in 2021 so we'll be designing that but we'll be adding a sidewalk all the way down to Cornerstone from where it ends halfway down. And we're still trying to protect conservation land and um, the community gardens. And I know we have Fresh Start has a table over there. But uh, the Agricultural Commission, and Elizabeth Almeida is here. She's chairman of that. They have done a bang-up job of creating a community garden. I think they have over 100 farmers. They lease plots. And this year, they successfully asked the Community Preservation Committee to give them money to put a well in so they don't have to cart it in buckets anymore. And uh, so that is at town meeting coming up. But uh, also, Lot and Farm, we are securing 21 acres. And that's um, and behind 64 Main Street too, 19 acres. We are considering some other opportunities at this time that I can't speak about. 
economic development. We have the best economic development committee, uh, I think, in the in the state, and we come up with a work plan each year and then assign all of us duties. And so these are some of the new things that we're going to try to do: recruiting new businesses, uh, defining our defining preferred target industries. We're working with this association here to try to come up with a list of major parcels for sale, implementing our EDSAT, which uh, Tingsboro and Chelmsford's just starting their EDSAT, and uh, trying to update our permitting guide and recognizing local business leaders working with agencies. So very active. All this, we have a website that you can go on and look at all our activities. So public-private partnerships this year, we're trying to venture. The Millworks is the old Courier building. It's at 22 Town Farm. Chris Ewell, the developer of Abbott Mill, bought this building. He's turning it into a big sporting complex. And he's going to have all sorts of things like boxing and batting cages. And he's actually, I think, going to put a bar in there, maybe a brew pub. And he's uh, seeking a, a liquor license for that. We did move our recreation, cemetery, and parks departments there. We're leasing space. And it allows them expansion. But you should go by and see this building. He's put in some turf fields already and basketball courts. He's in permitting uh, before the town now. He's, he's really going to town. It's going to be a wonderful facility. Other business opportunities is uh, the 12 North Main that I think I talked about last year. It's The RFP is out now. It's on our website. If you'd like to take it out, we're looking to partner with a developer to refurbish this building. And also Town Farm. I asked Eric yesterday to put for sale signs out in front of these two properties. Maybe that'll help. But uh, we are going to be going out. We went out once with an RFP on Town Farm, but there was a technicality. We're going to go out again. But either one of these buildings, if you think you have a business that might fit in here, please give us a call. Other municipal projects, most of you know that we're building a new fire station on Boston Road. It's supposed to be completed by the summer of 2018. And we are also combining our dispatch into one center, so we'll have one dispatcher for both police and fire. And um, we have, a, then we will replace the center fire station when we tear it down, and we're seeking some feasibility money at this town meeting to come up with a design. And we, we have a little picture there of the Fresh Start uh, gardens, and they put gardens at each one of our schools this year so the students could help learn to garden and then eat the um, the products. We have one behind the town hall, too, though I heard a plow took it out this year, so I don't know if we're going to get that back. But So we have town meeting coming up March 25th. We have a lot of articles on the warrant. Our budget is just over $110 million. The schools are looking for a, an override this year to pay teacher salary increases. They've done analysis and determined that our teachers are not keeping pace with other comparable communities. So they have asked the town to consider this. The Board of Selectmen and the fin Finance Committee did just recently vote in favor of this article. And if it passes, then it will go to the ballot. Uh, we also have $6.2 million in capital, uh, infrastructure, buildings, and so on. Uh, Rodenbush, many of you know about our Rodenbush building, 65 Main. We are looking for $7 million, $7 million to um, rehabilitate that building. We will have to move the Rodenbush Community Center out of the building during the duration of construction, which will be about 18 months and start in September if this is approved. CPC, or Community Preservation, will be paying the majority of this if it's approved. Citizens' petitions, we had a lot of citizen petitions this year. Um, Ebby Masaladun's here. He put in a citizen petition to build a restaurant a little over 14,000 square feet at 66 Boston Road. It's it's been controversial, and there's been a lot of discussion on this for the past several years, or a couple years, several months. Uh, and uh, But he does have a citizen petition, and um, the selectmen did vote to recommend dismissal because they didn't feel they were at a point with him on the agreement. But he's going to take it to town meeting. We'll see what happens. We have three uh, all-alcohol on the premises, citizen petitions. So we're out of alcohol license here. And like Tingsboro, 
One is Ebby for this restaurant here. Another is the Millworks I just showed you for their re restaurant bar that they want to put in there. And then those of you that are familiar with the very fine building, there's a little space right out front that they would like to lease for a restaurant. So that's the third one. So that'll be interesting. We also have a citizen petition to try to seek a property tax exemption for senior citizens that meet a certain criteria, and that would take their a portion of theirs and pass it on to the other residents. So the selectmen voted against recommending that this year. They'd like to take a look at it, but they feel it needs a little more work before we uh, vote to approve it. So that's my presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jody. As you can see, Westford is uh, very busy as well. So um, our third presenter today is uh, Town Manager Paul Cohen from Chelmsford. Good morning, everyone. As you can tell, it, we are busy, and it's amazing what's mm -hmm. going on in the communities. Uh, and it is good to be here to hear what's going on with our colleagues. And the story in Chelmsford is very much similar. Um, big three messages coming out of Chelmsford these days. Route 129, rental housing, future of schools. Route 129, that's our off-ramp right off of Route 3. Chelmsford has two uh, off-ramps, off one, or, or three actually off of Route 3. Drum Hill being the most popular in terms of retail. Uh, 110, which is near the uh, Stop and Shop Market Basket. And then 129, which is our business corridor. Uh, we suffered a major setback a year ago when Kronos announced they were relocating to Cross Point and Lowell uh, in the uh, what we call the Wang Towers, or Cross Point as today's uh, name for the facility. Um, that, that basically had us on reset. And what we were able to do at town meeting last fall in October is we rezoned the entire 129 commercial corridor. Because the 129 commercial corridor, which uh, on Barricka Road, was basically constructed in the shadow of Wang in the 80s with the old style industrial parks. Basically, people drove their cars there, worked in the buildings, went home at night, and drove away. We know in the year 2017 that that's not the model anymore. The model today is live, work, play. People want to have the services where they work and they, they want to be able to quickly get something at lunch or stop at services afterwards and perhaps even live in the area. So we updated our zoning successfully at Fall Town Meeting and the Attorney General just approved the zoning changes a month ago and we're basically on the market as a hot place to relocate um, in terms of space. And so what's going to happen in there is we're going to allow retail, we're going to allow residential development, and we've increased the height, densit, uh, height allowances and density in order to revitalize that corridor. And right now we have a lot of people kicking the tires. We know that some properties have exchanged hands, and we expect in the months uh, and years ahead to see a total revitalization of the 129 corridor. Much like our other colleagues, we, have, we are also going back for additional licenses, uh, liquor licenses at the state level. We're asking for 10 because we believe that there's that demand in that corridor uh, to support that activity. So it, it's really an exciting time for us. And again, like most things, you get it to a crisis with Kronos, which is our largest employer, over a thousand employees relocating, sort of put, really recalibrated us to move forward. So that's basically the 129 corridor. Second one, as I mentioned, was, was rental housing. As you saw with, with Jody's presentation in Westford, same thing in Chelmsford. It's just an exploding market, and everyone's sort of trying to catch the wave. As we speak this morning, they're moving uh, dirt on the Princeton Properties Development on Mill Road. Again, right off that same 129 uh, exit uh, on Route 3, where basically within 45 seconds, you could get off the highway if the, if the traffic light is there and be at your place. Because, again, we see the activities, whether you're in Littleton, Westford, Chelmsford, Tingsboro, as Kurt said, people want to live and have access to the highway. It's all about highway access. So that's why you're seeing all these residential developments pop up predominantly in our area um, by the highway. So th again, there's 108 units that are under construction, um, and that's an exciting opportunity. But that's sort of the tip of the iceberg. If you come down out to the, to the Westford line on 110, uh, two housing projects are going to begin uh, in, in the near future. One is is at the corner of Hunt Road. You see those dirt piles by the traffic signal there across from Enterprise Bank. That has been, uh, been deemed to have site project eligibility from mass housing. 
and there before the Board of Appeals next month in April um, for a 86 unit rental, uh, one, two, and three bedroom units um, along that corridor. So again, that's also influencing our schools, as, as Jody noted in Westford. And then as you go a little further where the gas station in the first phase of the Chelmsford Woods um, uh, affordable development uh, is, is currently occupied. Phase two will be breaking ground this summer. That's a project that's run by the Chelmsford Housing Authority. The unique part about that one, and it's another 56 units coming in, all of the units are affordable not 25%, but the Housing Authority has them at all affordable units for basically people within the guidelines of between 50 and 80% of the area median income. Major project, you know, and, and the first phase has been tremendous uh, and it's well managed. So again, it's amazing now with the, obviously the Princeton property in, in Westford, the amount of housing that's on that, that 110 corridor right now. We've, we've also had people coming in and meeting with us informally. Um, we have a project now going to the state for, for off of Brick Hill Road, which is at the Barica Town line, 108 rental units. Again, it's almost, it, it's right by the old forum, if you know where that is, the ice rink, just in the UPS, and it's off a of UPS drive, so you know the UPS facility if you've been down that corridor. Again, over 100 rental units. Again, proximity to Route 3. Be able to get to work, get move about in the corridor, and and again, they, these units, as you know, hold the attractiveness to either young uh, professionals who don't want the care and the maintenance of owning a property, as well as the senior parts of our community who um, who really don't want those responsibilities anymore. Um, and then we we have our uh, our remaining of the community. We're seeing a lot of turnover in terms of housing stock now that the market's strong, uh, in terms of the impacts on our school system. We also, again, we have a couple other developments, but again, I think you can see the trend of what's going on there. In terms of schools, the third, the third uh, leg of the stool, um, last week the school committee voted to submit a statement of interest to the Massachusetts School Building Authority for a, uh, a school project pertain pertaining to Chelmsford High School. What we envision is happening, we have a um, space problem. Um, in terms of the usable space for our facilities. So the plan will be to either renovate Chelmsford High School, which was built in 74, or build a new high school, and then take the existing building and move that to a middle school status, and then take the existing middle school uh, building and put it into elementary status. Uh, that's sort of the model that Chelmsford derived um, back in the 70s, the, what we call the new Chelmsford High School, which was built in 74, replaced the then Chelmsford High School that was built in 59, that became the middle school. So that's sort of the Chelmsford model. Um, again, you know, it, it, you're in a competitive market, and this is this is what we realize as a community: is if someone is going to locate in the area, they're doing their due diligence. So if someone is taking a job, let's say they're taking a job at Cross Point in Lowell at Kronos, well, they're going to come in. They're going to be competitive. They're going to say, "Well, where am I going to locate to move my family?" And they obviously they look at Westford and the quality of the schools and the quality of the community. They look at Tingsboro. They look at they look at um, Groton and so forth, and that's why you, you know the message that we have into our community is you've got to be competitive, and that obviously includes the quality of life and the schools issues, and so that's why we're we're we're, we're looking, and obviously the high school is your flagship campus, it's it's the space generally where most where everybody goes to, and they spend four years there, and then what would happen is, is we we've we've invested significantly uh, in our. Uh, physical plant at the schools and it almost works against you because unlike a case with Barica where you could walk into the current Barica High School and say my gosh they've got to do something here uh, and it was true I mean we, you know and it's not a criticism of Barica it was just a reality their, 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 their high school a portion of their high school was antiquated we've done, we've always maintained and kept an investment in our schools and so w w so therefore we can then pass down a building and, and still u utilize it in the future um, so that's what's going on with our school situation. It's a major, it's a major part of our community. Um, s same thing. We, we've got a very active economic development commission, um, who again with this activity on 129 is very engaged. We also have individual uh, economic development commissions. So we have one for the center, uh, the, the center village master plan committee. Uh, we've got a MassWorks grant going on there with, in conjunction with new rental luxury apartment units that are on the table. Uh, they've already been approved by the planning board and, <clears throat> and hope to break ground this spring. It's, it's right in the center behind Brick House, um, if you know that restaurant in the center of the community. And again, 
that, that that's right on the rail trail and we think that was one of the benefits is for people again who wanted access to the rail trail and wanted to basically have live and then be able to walk to restaurants and and that really is the story of Chelmsford in terms of restaurants recently is it's basically the strongest lineup of, of dining facilities that I think the town has seen in its recent memory. Andiamo's recently opened this past year in what used to be the Old Purity Supreme Stop and Shop Plaza. You have Nobo there. You've got Fishbones in the center. Um, we have a new re Mexican restaurant that just opened in the center as well, Cancun. Uh, there's a Mexican restaurant under construction up in North Chelmsford. Um, you know, you've, the, the mainstays of the Glenview, Princeton Station, and so forth. Um, there's, there's just a lot of activity. The other thing that Chelmsford prides ourselves in, and I think, is we have a single tax rate. We, unlike uh, many of our com com surrounding or competitive communities, we have one rate for businesses and, and residential development, and we uh, we think that's a plus for our community because that is a cost consideration when companies come into the area. Um, again, it, it's all about competitiveness, and and I just want you to know that. We, what we do is we strive to have expedited permitting. We meet with folks individually. And our goal and basically our accomplishment has been we want somebody who comes into the community to be out within 90 days before the regulatory boards. Because we know the issue is you want a decision. Whether it's yes or no, you don't want to be dragged out for six, nine, however many months. You want a decision in terms of is this viable and let's go on with our business. So with that, I'll conclude my comments and turn it over because I know people may have some questions in our limited time remaining. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Paul. I'm getting hungry sitting over there listening to all the restaurants that are open. I was actually kidding with Kurt earlier. One of the biggest stories we've had at lowellsun.com in the last couple of months was there's a restaurant opening devoted solely to mac and cheese. And that seemed to be a real draw for people. So um, <clears throat> maybe we could do like an eating through through the region thing, that'd be great. Um, I'd like to open up the floor to questions. I'm gonna uh, start for the first question, and you can go in any order. What's your biggest challenge in, in business development moving forward? Kurt? Um, I would say, the as I mentioned earlier, it's really um, getting our name out there. We're sort of the end of the line, if you're going mm -hmm. up Route 3, um, as, you, as you pull away from Lowell, you know, the, you have Westford, you have Chelmsford, um, but Tingsboro is really sort of the end of the line, and and trying to get um, uh, businesses interested in Tingsboro, um, that's probably the number one uh, challenge. Uh, we, we have, we believe, we have the zoning, we have the infrastructure there. It's just a matter of getting um, getting people to relocate or, or you know start a new business uh, in Tingsboro. Uh, one of the other challenges is our town center. Jody said they have five <laughs> in, in Westford. Uh, we have sort of a half uh, that we're trying to make into a whole. Um, so trying to create that sort of center where you know the, the bridge is a big part of Tingsboro. Uh, that's a, a, a big point where we have a lot of traffic and a lot of activity. So we'd like to expand on that as well. And I think with the, uh, the sewer going in will be a, a huge plus for us. But those are probably the, um, the biggest challenges for us right now. I would say for Westford, it's finding the right business. Um, you know, we've had some controversy this year from a large business that was coming to town that, that people didn't want. So I think we really want to find the right businesses. And um, the other challenges would be transportation. I did meet with a company about a year ago, and they really wanted transportation to and from Boston where their employees work and um, they weren't happy with the transportation we could offer. So that's, that would be a secondary one. And maybe third would be we do not have a, a town sewer other than for our municipal buildings. Uh, everyone that comes in has to provide their own septic system or treatment plan and for large companies that can be um, you know, a big big drawback, but uh, we're water in about 70% of the town. So uh, I would say those are our biggest challenges. Yeah, I would echo Jody's comments. It's, it's, it's transportation because the businesses are looking to attract 
young talent and the young talent seems to want to locate in the urban metropolitan areas and so how do you get them for that last mile from either the train station or or the you know or alewife or what have you to into your community in terms of you know because they're no longer interested if possible to do a 45 60 minute commute as as we saw years before where they they would look to locate further out west or up north now it's no they want the young professionals are looking to be into the boston cambridge scene and how do we get those people out here uh and and, and again once they're there and that's our other challenge i mentioned in my comments is having the amenities and services for them to to be to 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 um, want to stay in the area so when we talk to businesses about locating or, or remaining um, that that becomes a challenge uh, in, in our town. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, throw it up. We have any questions from the uh, from the uh, audience on the subject of transportation? What um, what would it take to try to promote a study looking at a, uh, a regional a regional transportation center in in this area, similar to let's say an Anderson or whatever it might be, to address that. Uh, an ability for people to commute to and from Boston with a little bit more more ease. Thank you. I, I think the challenge is the state funding. For example, as Kurt knows, the communities at Chelmsford and, and, and perhaps Westford, but Tingsboro, we've long advocated for expansion of commuter rail um, beyond the Lowell terminus. <clears throat> And because if you if you were going to do it correctly and you and you really recognize the economic center of the region, you'd have a train that went not only to Boston but would go to Nashua, would go to the Manchester Airport, and serve this whole corridor. The problem becomes a, f a financial one where the MBTA and the state, you know, is having difficulty maintaining its own infrastructure. And then you get the state dynamic. You know, they don't want to sort of be seen as promoting, expanding, or accommodating New Hampshire. And so that effort, you know, just is stalled in, in, in a black hole, quite frankly, because it's been, what, a decade and we've really not seen any meaningful activity. The other thing in terms of a transportation center, we, you know, uh, for many of us who remember, you know, the, the perfect site was at, was at Littleton off of, you know, Route 2 and 495, and that went nowhere either uh, in terms of the regional needs for, for transportation. And so what we're left with, unfortunately, is trying to run shuttles. Um, you know, in terms of trying to do vans and, and buses to the centers. The problem, though, is, as you say, they get gridlocked. And so now you're asking an employee, even with Wi-Fi on the buses and so forth, um, you know, to basically suffer through a prolonged commute. And, and that's, a, that's a big challenge. And, and so, again, lack of state funding for infrastructure, you know, and then the lack of these political issues in terms of where to locate or how to expand either rail or, or, um, or, or you know, a, a transportation center. The only thing I would add to that is, you know, we have formed a couple of transportation management associations, Crosstown Connect and Middlesex 3 just uh, just started one, and the state is very excited about that, but it still has the uh, issues that Paul brought up, so. Okay. Any other questions from the audience? Thank you. Paul, this question is to you. I was just curious about, you had mentioned you have two economic development committees in the town, and I was just kind of curious how you, how you handle that. And I guess the other part of that was, do you, on, do you have a paid individual who is working as a chair of an economic development committee or not? Sure. Um, this, is, this is under debate at town meeting right now. Right now we have the Economic Development Commission, which is town-wide. But we also have the Center Village Master Plan Committee, and we have the Vinyl Square Master Plan Committee, uh, which are two separate committees whose focus are obviously in those areas. We, we are asked, we, th there's an article to go to town meeting to provide additional funding. Uh, they're seeking $50,000 for marketing and promotion materials. Basically, I assigned my assistant town manager and our community development director, as, the, as well as the volunteers who serve on the uh, Economic Development Commission, to be the outreach to the community. Right now, we're having a debate whether we need a full-time economic outreach uh, employee but it, in the discussion is perhaps at $100,000 per year to be out there uh, reaching out to the communities. Um, when we look, communities such as Billerica, Bedford have such employees who's, who, in addition to the planning and community development office, they are the outreach um, to the business market. So that's the debate we're having is what can we afford, but also what is necessary in terms of doing the outreach uh, into the, the business community. Um, 
And so that's that's the big debate that's going on in Chelmsford right now. But yeah, very clear that the economic development is the key um, of the question of providing growth, jobs, and, 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 and in essence behind it all, somewhat tra tax relief as well. All I would add is I don't need to pay anybody because I have five of us here today. So, we're, you know, volunteer, four are volunteers, but, and, and you do such a fantastic job that um, I, I think we're all set in Westford. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, well, seeing none, I thank our uh, guests today, Kurt Bell Vance from Tingsboro, Jody Ross from Westford, Paul Cohen from Chelmsford, thank you very much for being here today and uh, sharing the good news. Round of applause. <clears throat> and uh, thank you to Juniper for hosting, as always. They're always such great hosts. And uh, thank you for your attention. I'm going to turn this back over to Gary. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate you coming here doing this. Th thanks for taking time. I did day, Kurt, Jody, Paul. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you, everybody, for coming. I'd like to thank Juna for hosting this for us, and I'd like to say uh, thank Pam and Cheryl for putting it all together for the Westwood Business Association. Thank you again for coming. <laughs>